What's up guys, Red Raven here with my first sound designed request video. This sound was requested by Dinosaurs XRX Cool. And he wants to know how to make the well he or she, I guess I don't really know. Um they want to know how to make the sound found at the very beginning of Panty Raid's song Enter the Machine. Now I've been messing around in blue for about the past 20 30 minutes trying to figure out this sound and I haven't been able to nail it down exactly because there's there's really no telling you know what effects or anything they used to make this sound so this is going to be kind of like a generalization um, type series I suppose because it's it's going to be pretty hard to, to get the sounds exact but I'll do the best I can to get them as close as possible and I'll I'll try to show you a few ways that you can alter and vary the sound to get different results and to help you be a little bit more creative. So, he the the sound at the beginning of the song is a uh, a very ambient pad sound and it's got some harmonics in it, kind of a metallic type of sound and the first sound that I kind of messed about um with was was this sound here and I believe that was just routed through my microphone channel so let me solve that terribly sorry about that so here's the sound So that was my first take on the sound, and the way I went about doing that was in Rob Papin's Blue. Um, I set Oscillator A to Spectral 31 and left everything alone. I set Oscillator B to Res 1, and I fine-tuned it up by plus 2 cents, and I turned the volume down a little bit. And then I set Oscillator C to a sine wave at ratio 0.5 and left everything else the same. Now, where the ambience comes from these sounds is the envelopes. So, if we go into the envelope tab, you can see that here on oscillator A, we've got a nice long decay. Um, the picture doesn't really show it that well. It's better to look at the bar settings over here because the longer the release, um, it shrinks down the graph. Like, look, if I move it, I think it, you kind of see what I'm talking about there. It doesn't really demonstrate it very well. So, you, well, in blue, you need to turn the amount up uh, on the individual oscillator envelopes, but not the main envelope. So, I have oscillators A and B running the same volume envelope. And in blue, I really like the fact that if you right click over this envelope, you see I can copy paste or clear the envelope so it makes it pretty easy well not pretty extremely easy to get the same envelope copied over several oscillators and it allows you to do a few different things so I noticed in Panty Raid's sound that not the entire sound didn't fade in there was a um, a lower tone to it that was constantly present that didn't fade in so that's why I used oscillator C and if we look at oscillator C's uh, volume envelope you can see I didn't use it at all and if we go to the main envelope there's a slight attack but not a lot um, and there's a little bit of release on the main envelope as well so that that's the basis of this sound if we go into the effects I used an ensemble with a pretty short length and I turned up the mix and that was really the only thing I messed with on the default settings on the in, uh, ensemble and then I routed it serial through the uh, reverb and I turned up the length and gave it a bit more mix and that kind of helps give a, a nice rounded out tail to the sound. So again, that this sound sounds like this.
You know, and I'm playing dark chords. You could play happy chords with it too. So that was the first sound. And then I kind of just started tweaking oscillators and stuff and came up with a few variations on that. Now on all of these variations I'm getting ready to show you, the effects are the exact same. I didn't mess with the effects at all between these variations. The only things I messed with were the oscillators and filters. Um, so the first variation I came up with was this. So you can hear it has fewer high um, harmonics to it, and that's because it, you can see I routed it through a 60B low pass filter with the filter frequency turned down a bit, but here's the catch 22. I used an envelope on the filter. Um, as you can see, this knob here dictates how much of the filter envelope is being applied to the cutoff. So if we go back to the envelope tab and we go to the filter, you can see I have a pretty significant attack and the sustain is pretty high so it filters up and then stays up and then the release is pretty long. Um, so that kind of helps take care of some of the harmonics in the beginning if you want a more mellowed out like darker sound. So I used Spectral 8 on Oscillator A and turned the feet up about halfway. Oscillator B, I used overtone, fine tuned up plus two cents, and I turned the volume down a good bit on that one. And then oscillator C is the same as the last patch, uh, sine wave at 0.5%, or 0.5 ratio, sorry, and the volume turned down a little bit. And again, this sound sounds like this. And if you play chords with this, like I'm playing single notes, if you play chords, you get some pretty nice big sounds. So that was the first variation. Now onto the third variation I made. Now this one is quite a bit different. It, I'll go ahead and let you hear what it sounds like. And you can hear it's not really anything close to panty raid sound, but like I said, I'm going to show you a few variations on these sounds to open up your creative thought process. Well, to try to open it up anyway. So what I did here is oscillator A is sine res at ratio 1, with the feet up about halfway, volume just over 12 o'clock, I guess. Um, oscillator B is a square th uh, 3. And I don't remember if that, that would be additive square three because there is no analog square three in Rob Pep and Blue. So um, with oscillator B, it's a square three additive. The symmetry is turned plus 15, or 17% here. The feed is about 32, the volume's about minus 18 dB. And it looks like on oscillator A, I turned the symmetry to minus 11%. Now what the symmetry is, is it has to do with pulse width modulation. It offsets uh, the, the starting point of the oscillator, basically. So it gives it a bit of a different sound. And when you throw that in with some feed, you get a few more harmonics out of it. And then oscillator C is spectral 9 at ratio 0.5. And... The volume is down a bit and the feed is up about 49%. And, oh, forgot. Oscillator B is fine tuned plus two cents. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. Um, they're all three routed through filter A, and I set it to a Vox filter. Now, in Rob Pabin's Blue, the frequency cutoff doesn't really give it the talking sound. It's actually the distortion knob that does that. So to automate the distortion knob, I created a multi-point envelope here, 
and you can see it fades up and then slowly fades to a sustaining point here. And then if we go to the mod matrix, you see that I have mod envelope A controlling filter A distortion by about 47%. And I have the distortion mount turned up to 41% to begin with, so it's it's got a good bit of the the vox coming through. Now I also have the filter envelope modulating the frequency cutoff because that also helps give it a little bit of a unique sound and I have the resonance jacked up to about 36% which is quite a bit and that helps give it some more upper high um, harmonics and helps round out the sound a bit. So again this one sounds like this. I'll play some chords this time. And then I started making some darker pads because those are all kind of happy sounding pads unless you play dark chords. But I wanted some really dark, dirty, just there's no way these, these pads can be happy type of thing. So here's what the first dark pad that I made sounds like. Now, I need to note that these dark pads are meant for like one note things, like if you start playing several notes. It sounds like shit, to be honest. And that's because I used the comb filter, and I'll kind of explain that in a second. So oscillator A is a saw res at ratio 1, uh, feed at about 47%, symmetry at minus 11%, volume at 7.6 dB. Oscillator B is sorry about that. My microphone dropped out like I told you guys about in the first video blog. So anyway, oscillator B is triangle one and it's ratio one fine tuned plus two cents. Feed is thirty two percent. Symmetry is plus seventeen percent. Volume is minus 18 dB. Oscillator C is spectral 7, ratio 0.5. And the feed is 49% and the volume is minus 16 dB. Um, now I have all three of these routed through filter A, which I have set to a comb filter. And the frequency at 86 Hz. And the resonance at 36%. Distortion at 33%. And... If I remember right, the distortion doesn't really mess with anything on the comb filter. But like I said, I made all of these just by like... I started with the first sound that I showed you and I saved that preset and then I tweaked it, renamed it, saved that as a preset, tweaked it more, renamed it. So a lot of these things are just carried over from the, the older patches that I was just modifying and didn't really care to clean up. So where we get that really... Um, nasty sound at the beginning this part is the comb filter frequency being set low if I set it higher you hear that goes away so if I put that back to 86 Hertz where it was you hear we get it back now I wanted that because like I said I wanted this to be really dark and you can't use this in a happy way type of thing and I, I'm pretty sure that I achieved that with this. So that, that's it for this patch. Again, it sounds like this. Okay. And now I'll go into the second dark pad I made. And again, this is just me tweaking the last patch. So oscillator, well let me show you what it sounds like first. So you hear it's very similar to the first one. It's just got a little bit of a different tonal quality to it because I, I use different oscillators. And that's really all that I changed on this one is I just changed the oscillators. Everything else is the exact same. So 
oscillator A is harmonic 1, B is glass, and the ratio I turned up to 2. And oscillator C is a saw, and that would be the analog saw. And like I said, all of the other settings like the symmetry, the tuning is... Sorry about that, my computer is, is absolutely horrible. So, um, the only thing different about this one tuning wise is oscillator B is turned up one octave via the ratio. So, even the comb filter is basically the same. The only difference is the frequency I turned down to 65 hertz instead of 86. So again, this pad sounds like this. Okay, now I'll go on to the third dark ambient pad. And this one is a little bit more different. So oscillator A is a saw, and that would be the analog saw. Ratio 1 and feed 47%, volume minus 7.6 dB, symmetry negative 11%. Oscillator B is digix at ratio 3, fine tuning plus 22 cents. The feed is 32%, symmetry plus 17%, volume minus 10.4 dB. Now, let me just make a quick side note. If you're trying to follow this on a synthesizer other than Rob Papin's Blue, um, these numbers mean nothing to you. Really, the only thing you got to worry about is the fine tuning and the volume. The symmetry is a very minor thing, and the feed is a very minor thing. And it's just a slight thing to just, just help you get that little extra bit out of your sound, you know? So really it doesn't matter and really the oscillators don't even matter that much because as you can hear I'm using I've gone through this is my sixth pad and you know they all kind of have the same attributes but they all have their own unique tonal qualities which come from which oscillators you decide to use so that's the end of my side note so oscillator C is spectral 11 ratio 0.5 and feed is 49% and volume is minus 11.2 dB. So these are also routed through the comb filter. The frequency is 92 hertz. Uh, resonance 25%. Distortion doesn't matter. The envelope is plus 27%. And that's what's given us that, that sound at the beginning. It's the comb filter frequency being modulated instead of being set. So I, th I think I forgot to mention that on the last two dark pads, my apologies. So this pad sounds like this. And so you can hear, this has also got that dark comb filter sound, but it also has more of the harmonics coming through because of the oscillators I chose to use. And that, that about wraps it up for this video, I think. So again, thanks to Dinosaurs Are Cool for requesting this. And this is Red Raven peacing out.